Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. This is the fourth part of crime scene bloodstain pattern analysis in which we'll be studying about the analysis of spatter stains. Basically how uh, up till now what we have done is we have understood about basics of, uh, of crime scene bloodstain pattern analysis, what are blood stains, their biological properties, their types and further the chemical enhancement procedures. In this video, we'll be analyzing the spatter stains. How in the crime scene, the forensic experts actually analyze the spatter stains and they get investigative leads through their analysis. So, the analysis of spatter stains can be done to find out the velocity of the blood droplets for the directionality of the stains, means, uh, which means in which uh, from which direction the stains must have arrived, the angle of impact and the area of origin um, which basically means the origin from which the blood stain must have arrived so the velocity of blood droplets may be of the blood droplet may be of low velocity maybe of medium velocity or high velocity so how we can determine this let's let's understand this in the next slide so the velocity of blood droplets uh, as the traveling speed of blood droplets increases the size of the spatter stain decreases. So from this, we can understand that traveling speed is implying to the velocity. Velocity of the blood droplets will be inversely proportional to the size, which means greater the velocity, less will be the size of the blood droplets. So you have to remember this. Uh, again, medium velocity impact spatter is formed when a blood store blood source is subjected to a force associated with beatings or stabbings so basically uh, beatings in the cases of a uh, beating or stabbing using a knife um, the velocity of the blood stain is majorly medium velocity impact stains so the resulting stains will be 1 to 4 millimeter in diameter low velocity stains are usually the normal stains which uh, fall under the force of gravity and they are uh, their diameter is equal to 4 millimeter or greater than that low velocity spatter stains medium velocity we have discussed that uh, their diameter or their size range uh, ranges from 1 to 4 millimeter in diameter talking about the high velocity impact spatter it is formed when a blood source is subjected to a force which is associated with shooting using firearms as we all know that bullet contains a high velocity so through uh, the, the injury produced due to a bullet will also be a high velocity impact spatter stains will result from that injury and the resulting stains will be less than one millimeter in diameter. So you can easily understand here that as the velocity of the blood droplets uh, increases, the uh, size of the blood droplets will decrease exponentially. You can see here the low velocity impact stains, the diameter will be greater than uh, or equal to four millimeter and these are the high velocity, medium velocity spatter stains where, of which their dry, diameter ranges from uh, 1 to 4 millimeter. So the second uh, topic in analyzing the blood stains is finding the directionality of these stains. How the crime scene experts, they find the direction through which the stains have arrived. So it is applicable when blood source is projected onto a surface at an angle between 0 and 90 degree. So uh, what this means is when the blood source it is projected to the surface at an angle which is equal to, which is uh, which ranges from 0 to 90 degree then we can find out the directionality of these stains it's, it can be 45 degree 30 degree depending it will range from 0 to 90 degree so under this condition the resulting spatter is a is an elongated ellipse known as parent stain and an additional satellite stain will form if the blood source is projecting to the surface at an angle between 0 to 90 degrees, suppose uh, the uh, object or the blood stain is coming at an angle of 45 degree to the source. This is this is the blood surface and it is the this is the blood stain which is coming at an angle of 45 degree. Suppose this is a case. So what will happen here is two stains will form. A parent stain will form and a satellite stain will form. And through this stains, we can find out the directionality. How? 
the small first understand what a satellite blood stain and what is a parent stain so uh, satellite spatter these are the small droplets that break off the parent spatter as you can see here there is a size difference between the parent blood stain and the satellite blood stain so you can imply from here that a parent stain gives rise to a satellite stain so we can also imply that uh, this satellite stain is formed from the parent stain right so satellite spatter small they are the small droplets that break from the parent spatter so a spine is observed which is pointed edge away from the parent stain so this is a spine which is a pointed edge which is acting away from the parent stain this is formed away from the parent stain the pointed end of the spine always points towards the direction of travel so the points the end on which the pointed the pointed edge it always shows the direction of the travel of the blood stain so from this here uh, from the given stain we can see that the direction of the stain must be in this direction so the stain must the source must be somewhere here or uh, in the left portion and the, it is traveling towards the right portion hope this much is clear to you all so you have to remember here it is a, in an important point that the pointed end of the spine it always points towards the direction of the travel towards the direction let's understand the directionality of the uh, spatter stains in a lit, little more clear way so this is a parent stain when a blood spatter is projected to the surface at an angle between 0 to 90 degree i'm repeating again the spatter will be formed in two ways or two parts first spatter or the first part will be the parent stain while the second part will be a satellite stain which is or which is a part of the parent stain only but it is smaller than it than the parent stain its edge the sat the edge of the satellite stain will show the direction of travel of that stain so this is the edge and it is a spine spine portion will also suggest along with the satellite stains edges that this stain is being traveling in this downward direction according to this plane so i hope you can clearly understand the satellite stains that are projected from the main parent stain this is a parent stain and these are the satellite stains that are formed from this parent stains they are basically small stains small droplets that are mainly originated from the parent stain so I hope that you have all understood the directionality of blood spatter stain. This is also very important in determining or in analysis. Let's move further and understand the angle of impact. Now what is angle of impact? The acute angle which is alpha relative to the plane of a target at which the blood drop strikes the target. We were talking in the previous uh, topic about the directionality and we were saying that the uh, Blood, if the blood droplet will uh, fall on the surface of an ang uh, surface with a certain angle, this angle on which the blood droplet strikes the surface, it will be the angle of impact, right? So we can also say it that the ratio of the width of the width and the length of the parent stain is proportional to the sine of the angle of impact. So sine alpha, alpha is the angle of impact, will be equal to the width of the parent stain and the length of the parent stain now what why we are taking parent stain because this is the major stain and the satellite stains are just originated small droplets that are originated from the uh, parent stain so parent stain is the major stain so we have to take its length as well as its width in finding out the angle of impact so L, alpha is the angle of impact l will be the length of the parent stain and w will be the width of the parent stain in the minor axis and length will be in the major axis. So you can see here the formation of various spatter stains at certain angles at an angle of 90 degree. You can see 90 degree the stain that is formed is completely in a circular fashion. The angle of 50 degree, little distorted stain. Then at an angle of 20 degree, it will completely be an, uh, divided into elliptical pattern which in which the parent stain, and you can see the satellite stain also. Similarly, so you can see here as the angle decreases, the distortion is also decreased, which means the blood stain formed will be more elliptical in comparison to a more angle, which is 90 degree. So you can imply from here that 
angle of impact alpha it is also inversely proportional to the length of the stain or the shape this is angle of uh, uh, impact you will not get confused here so i'll be using a angle of impact will be inversely proportional to the length of the stain so the more the angle of impact the, the length or the shape will be more circular less the angle of impact the length will be more of the stain and the shape will be more distorted so i hope you have completely understand the angle of impact concept also so here uh, the angle of impact can be determined based on relationship between the length and the width of the stain according to the formula that was written earlier and the measurement of the stain's axis is critical to the accuracy of the calculation of the angle of impact so we have to measure very accurately the length as well as the width length is usually calculated on the major axis this is the major axis and the width is usually calculated on the minor axis now the third analysis that we can that we can do from the blood stain is we can find the area of origin uh, area of origin is the three dimensional location from which the spatter had originated the area of origin can be determined based on the measurements from multiple elongated spatter states so we can determine the area of origin from multiple elongated spatter states as you can see in the image these are all elongated spatter stains and through which the area of origin can be determined let's see how the determine it is determined by using the string method or the tangent method so basically to determine the area of origin there are two methods a tangent method and a string method let's see both of them and understand how uh, it is usually calculated so let's see first the string method uh, this is the string method you can see there are various strings that are used by the experts to calculate the area of origin uh, what happens here is multiple well-formed stains are selected well-formed means elongated spatter stains are selected and then their angle of impact is calculated suppose in this case uh, this is a well-formed spatter stain so we will calculate its angle of impact first an angle of impact was so uh, the, as we all studied earlier that angle of impact can be calculated by uh, sine alpha equals to uh, width of the stain divided by the length of the stain so through this we will calculate first the angle of impact of this particular stain if we are taking this case and then so as you all can see here these scientists what they are doing is they uh, they have calculated the area of ang uh, angle of impact of these stains and they have connected the string particular string on one end of these spatter stain and the next end will be the surface so th through this we can determine the area of origin of that strain basically setting the path of these strings we can calculate the area of origin so this is one method of calculating the next method is tangent method so what happens in the tangent method is the directionality of a single strain is determined first so these are all individual strains first we'll determine the directionality of one strain suppose this stain we'll determining the directionality of one stain by calculating its angle of impact then a line is then back projected this line this is a back projected line and in along the major axis of the blood stain so this line will be back projected the angle containing the intersections generated by lines drawn along through the long axis of the individual stains that indicates in two dimensions the location of the blood source so similarly we will continue to do uh, the same thing we will back line draw a back projected line from all the individual stains and the point on which they will meet that will be the area of convergence as it is written here 
then we'll calculate the height of the area of origin by this formula d tan alpha we will firstly calculate all of their angle of impact then uh, we will back project the line they will meet at a particular point which is called the area of origin and from this area of origin we'll calculate the height of the area of origin through the formula d tan alpha d will be the uh, distance or the measurement of the back projected line distance from the spatter stain to the area of convergence right so this is another way of determining the height or the area of origin to the tangent method so this was all about this video so the last video is left on which we will be discussing the case studies where the actual blood stain pattern analysis was used to investigate a particular case that video will be very interesting so please stay tuned up till then and if you have any kind of doubt in this video you can ask in the comment section below uh, we'll be meeting in the next video if you like this video you can share it with your friends and please give a thumbs up you can also subscribe to this channel for regular updates and thank you very much for joining